but his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning. It's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Wow. This one's rough. This is a YouTube video called Killer Kyle, American Clan Hero or American Murderer. <laughs> he gives you a hell of an option there, doesn't he? <laughs> The worst part about this video is the blatant hypocrisy. He's going to be complaining throughout the entire video about how Kyle's mind has been poisoned by the people around him. But he is absolutely worse in every respect. But his mind is so poisoned that he can't even think straight. And you're going to see all kinds of factual errors, misunderstandings, and the race card is going to get played constantly. This guy should be on Roland Martin's show. He'd be perfect. Top of the morning, everybody. Welcome to Just a Point of View. Today's topic, I shouldn't be talking about this, but it's necessary. Yeah, it would have probably been better if he hadn't. Today's topic is dealing with Killer Cow Rittenhouse. You may remember this young man who murdered several people and injured others as a domestic terrorist. I believe that it happened in uh, Wisconsin. He believes it happened in Wisconsin. Oh yeah, this guy is really well informed. But before I continue, I want to let the listening audience know that even though in many of my videos, I identify so-called white Americans as so-called whites, and I may say so-called black, so forth and so on. I am not in any way, form, or fashion against anybody because of their nationality or their, you know, their connection with a certain ethnic group. What? Yeah, he's going to violate that constantly. I am against or I oppose and I resist and I will continue to fight to the casket drop is injustice. If it's coming from the left or the right. He's just about ready to inflict a whole bunch of injustice on Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> yeah, get ready. It's going to get rough. From the black or the white. From anywhere where do I see that there's a double standard or some criminal uh, activity going against people that are just trying to live and survive, I will lend my voice to speak on the behalf of those that don't have a voice. Or well, let's see here. Kyle was trying to live and survive, and he encountered criminal activity inflicted on him. He should be on Kyle's side, but he's not. You know why? Race. Well, that don't have a platform. So those that are listening that may be uh, the so-called white American ethnic group or nationality, I am telling you from the depths of my heart that I have no prejudice or racist uh, connotations against anyone because of, again, their nationality or their ethnic city. Even yeah, he's a liar. He's going to contradict that a bunch. Even though some of the things that I say may sound harsh, but the truth is harsh. So let's move forward. Some of the things you're going to say are going to sound stupid. Kill a cow, Rittenhouse. It's the topic of the day because some events that took place a few days ago that was very disturbing to me. I couldn't get to the platform and speak on it until today. I had learned that Mr. Um, Rittenhouse had gone uh, missing in a sense. He was no longer at the residence or the place that the probation people had him um, as being at, as far as according to the um, documents. The probation people. 
I'm sorry, but would it be okay if we try Kyle and convict him first before we put him on probation? But this could be a slip of the tongue. I mean, he meant to say bail or bond, but he, he, he said probation uh, by accident. It's in the records. And <clears throat> the thing came about is that his lawyer knew where he was at and refused to tell the judge because they said they, that he feared for his life, he was getting death threats, so forth and so on. Yeah, he's got it wrong. He, Kyle's attorney was agreeable to providing the address of Kyle if they only kept it sealed. It was the prosecutor who denied that. He didn't want mailing address sealed. He wanted it put out in the public, and you know why. And I don't blame Kyle a bit for wanting to keep his address sealed. Now, did they go about it the right way? Well, it turned it worked out okay for them in the end. Uh, there can be you can debate that, but whatever the case, wanting to keep your address private is pretty reasonable given the situation he's in, especially considering what this dude is going to be saying about him. So my problem or gripe with this is that I am well aware of the so-called justice system that really is a system of injustice. And you can make your own analysis, agreement, or disagreement with my statement. I'm going to disagree with your statement. So here in Washington, D.C., I know for a fact if you're put on parole or probation and you're, give, and you're giving the probation or parole officer an address, that is where you're supposed to be at. That is He's right. If you're on probation or parole, and you're wherever you're living, you probably do have to provide it to the probation officer. What does that have to do with Kyle? I'll tell you what. He thinks Kyle is on probation. Oh, man. It's your place of residence. That's where they come to make the home visits. That's where they make contact with you. At. That's where they uh, go if they need to re-arrest you. Again, home visits. He's thinking probation. So, in this case with Mr. Rittenhouse, um, the probation officer went to go visit. He wasn't there. He had relocated without giving any information to the system. And it came to the point where there's, there was a judge that they attempted to go and get a arrest warrant for him. And, and, and the judge said that he didn't have the authority to do that. That's right. He didn't. Uh, he read the statute that basically stated he didn't have the authority to do that. Kyle has not been charged with any serious crimes while he was out on bail, not probation. And therefore, the statute basically says that, that the judge cannot issue a warrant for his arrest. That sounds perfectly reasonable. As far as the bail increase, well, that's because Thomas Binger put together a terrible argument, all emotional, for why the bail should be increased, and the judge didn't buy it. I don't think any rational judge would have bought it either. If you're going to increase the bond by $200,000, which was what Binger's request was, you have to make a connection to the purposes of bail. He didn't do it. It was all emotional stuff of white supremacy and, and drinking and all that kind of stuff. And also this notion that, well, he needs to provide his address because we have a long-standing tradition here in Wisconsin of open records. See, that was the issue. Thomas Binger wanted to have Kyle's address disclosed publicly. And, of course, that would have probably gotten Kyle killed. And that's the reason why the judge said, no, 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 no. And the judge, by the way, does have Kyle's address now. So does the sheriff. Everybody should be happy, all except Thomas Binger. He wants Kyle's address because he wants to give it to Michael Gravely. And Michael Gravely, well, I won't go there. Well, I'm telling you that that judge is a bold-faced liar. That judge is in support of the behavior that Mr. Rittenhouse has committed. As okay, so here is Mr. I'm just being fair and honest. 
And now he's got the judge pegged as part of the white domestic tyranny, the terrorism, simply because he didn't go along with the prosecutor's request. Wait till Kyle gets exonerated. Watch what this guy says. He says, I have no problem with anybody from any race. Yeah, he does. He's as racist as they come. Father is kill a cow murdering those two um, civilians. You know, he's a domestic terrorist, and the judge showed by his uh, refusal to, you know, to put out an arrest warrant for him that he is, you know, in agreement with this domestic terrorist. Kyle hasn't been convicted yet. He's, he's talking in terms of Kyle already been convicted of being a terrorist, and so why is the judge being lenient with him? Kyle hasn't gone to trial yet. See, this is how they think. They have Kyle all but convicted in their heads. Killer Cow Rittenhouse. You know, Killer Cow had drunk the Trump juice. And Killer Kyle had drunk the Trump juice. What the hell is that about? All we know about Kyle is that he might have attended a Trump rally at one time. There's a picture of somebody at a Trump rally, and it looks like it might be him. Uh, we haven't had any confirmation from that as far as I know. He has had no dealings with white supremacy at all. They went through his Facebook page, this social media accounts, and they found nothing. The only thing they found was that he seems to have a very deep admiration for the police and law and order, which to him, is that's white supremacy right there. I mean, only a scum, white, racist person would like the police. Yeah. And, you know, I would want to give him, a, you know, some type of excuse, but I can't. He murdered two people. You have no interest in giving him an excuse. I can't because I know how the system has been against people that looks like me as far as, you know, the melanin system. In other words, we need to go after Kyle and, and punish him hard because other people have gotten away with stuff and, and other people have been punished. What happened to these other people that you're talking about is not Kyle's fault. And you can't go after Kyle just to sort of right this wrong. Two wrongs don't make a right. And Kyle had nothing to do with those cases. I know that there are people that would not be on pro, um, you know, not on house arrest. He's now got Kyle on house arrest. He went from probation to parole to house arrest. Sooner or later, he's going to get it right. Uh, he has to, right? I mean, the law of, of averages, right? I mean, he'll get it right. Please tell me he'll get it right. Or anything if they had committed oh. that uh, atrocity of a crime against other people. It's plain and simple in the black community. We got people right now in jail that have been charged correctly or fraudulently held without bond. And he may be right, but that's not Kyle's fault. And by the way, whenever somebody says, put simply, that usually means what follows is going to be garbage. And guess what? Yep, that's exactly what it was. Again, they see an injustice that uh, out there, and they want to inflict it on Kyle to get even. That's what this is about. This is revenge. Because of the level of, you know, the severity of the charges against them being a potential flight risk, meaning that they may not come back to court. Well, he has come back to court. In fact, Kyle's attorney made a point of it. Look, there's no need to increase his bail because he has shown up at every proceeding. He's not a flight risk. He was bailed out in November. He's still around. And if he had an inkling to go on the lam, why hasn't he done so? Because of Mr. Rittenhouse, uh, what they call that uh, complexion of protection, he has been allowed liberties that others have been denied. You know, he's been re reunited with his uh, so-called white nationalist mother, who... His white nationalist mother, yeah. 
Oh, man. Yeah, she got her little swastika armbands and stuff. Here's the real injustice. He wants to talk about injustice. How about this for injustice? How about poor Wendy Rittenhouse, who's done nothing wrong here? She, there's no shred of evidence that she has raised him improperly. She has not committed any crimes. And these punks go around and they basically lab label her a criminal, lay down all of these horrible labels on her. She has done nothing wrong. Who should be charged because her and I think it's her father, they have groomed this young man. They have poisoned his mind. They have um, allowed him to drink the Trump juice. Okay, so let's talk about being a poisoned mind. No, you're the one that has the poisoned mind. You have had this filled in your head since probably you were little, that everybody who opposes you and opposes anything you want must be a white domestic terrorist. Wendy Rittenhouse has done nothing wrong. Kyle's father doesn't even seem to be involved that much in, in Kyle. He certainly doesn't seem to be responsible for anything that happened in Kenosha. Neither was she. She didn't drive him to the protest. She drove him to Kenosha the night before so that he could spend the night at his friend's house so they could go clean graffiti at the high school the next morning. She didn't know about the protest. She had nothing to do with the gun. All of this was a surprise to her. However, you're going to go and attack her and then complain about injustice. Oh, the injustice that we suffer. Yeah, well, what are you doing to her? And he has lost his mind. So another thing that Mr. Rittenhouse just did, there was a no-no. It was a violation of his um, conditions of release. And if it wasn't, it should have been. Was it a violation of his release or not? Do your research. So if you get arrested in Washington, D.C., and you say like you, you was um, arrested on a, on a, on a certain block because you were selling drugs, they tell you that you cannot go on that block. You cannot go around people doing that uh, that type of behavior. You can't be in the presence of people that's, you know, uh, participating in the sale of so-called illicit drugs. Okay, so let's see if we got this right. If you're nailed for drugs in Washington, D.C., uh, and you're out on bail, uh, you will not be allowed to go to a certain corner where you are selling drugs. Well, I'm not sure about that. That's true, uh, maybe, but I wouldn't think so. Uh, you, you certainly couldn't go to maybe a drug house where you are picked up. I mean, that would be out. But a corner of, of a street? I doubt that. And you can't hang out with people that were involved in the original drug arrest. That is true. Now, let's talk about Kyle. Who were the people he was involved with? Uh, that day. Well, Dominique Black took him to the protest. Kyle's not allowed to talk to Dominique. Uh, also, Ryan Balch. He's not allowed to talk to Ryan either. Not allowed to talk to any of the witnesses in the Kenosha protest. So, what's your beef? Now, Mr. Brittenhouse went to a bar with his mother out there at, where he stays at, and they say that, you know, he's under age, 17 years old. Well, so he shot these people in a bar? Did he go to the bar where the crime took place? Is that your problem? No, he, the bar's not even in Kenosha. Should have been, uh, should be, or should have been charged as an adult. So he is being charged as an adult. What are you talking about? Don't you follow the news? He's in there drinking with his mom. Madness. <laughs> madness because he's drinking with his mom which is legal in Wisconsin by the way uh, he's 18 years old but he can drink with his mother but that's madness he sees some white nationalists they come over and you know um, honor him well these are proud boys I'm not sure if they are white nationalists or not I don't really know much about them you know they uplift him in his behavior of murder how dare he allow himself to be uplifted <laughs> and how do you know he's uplifted look let me explain to, to him that Kyle's in this bar and there are some members of the Proud Boys although to be honest with you we really haven't had confirmation of that either uh, how do we know they were Proud Boys I don't know they did 
according to someone th saying the Proud Boys theme. So I suppose they were. And they see Kyle. They go over to him because he's a famous celebrity, right? And obviously, being Kyle, they're going to really like him. And they take uh, selfies with him. Now, Kyle's probably had three beers in him by now, right? And so he's like, yeah, whatever. And um, he takes selfies. They serenade him. But Kyle's probably just probably drunk and a little bit, you know, he's going along with this. And he does this white symbol thing but none of this is illegal none of this violated his bond agreement and there's nothing to say that it should have been in his bond agreement because guess what we have a right to a first amendment freedom of expression if kyle wants to do this express his love for adolf hitler i guess is how he's probably framing it he can there's nothing to stop him from doing that and this young man, intoxicated, not even developed properly mentally. I, in, a, in a years to come, Mr. Rittenhouse may look back on this event that took place in his life that changed his life, changed the lives of the people that he murdered and may find some remorse once he's separated from the poison of his mother, his community, and the culture that he in, has embraced, and that's white nationalism. See, <laughs> he's got it all down as uh, he's, in, he's poisoned in his environment of white nationalism based on no evidence whatsoever. Again, Kyle is just a white kid who shot some people. They were BLM protesters, or at least everybody's claiming they were. And right away, he's going to have Kyle pegged as a white supremacist, white nationalist. This dude's racist. He's absolutely racist. Another thing is that Mr. Rittenhouse wouldn't be out right now today if it wasn't for so-called white nationalist, evangelical uh, Christians, so-called Christians, actually charlatans. These individuals raised over $2 million or got him out on a $2 million uh, bond or release order. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, Kyle's bond was set at $2 million, and some people said, hey, let's raise the money so that he can get out of jail so that he can help prepare his defense. He has not been convicted. And therefore, as long as somebody can come up with the bail, there is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with paying for anybody's bail. And I bring up the case all the time of Crystal Kaiser, who is a black female, same age as Kyle, also committed a crime in Kenosha. Well, let's just say that she's been accused of a crime. And her crime was killing a man, and according to the police, she planned it and burned the house down afterwards and stole the man's car. Was it self-defense? A trial will find out. And I think she might have a self-defense case. And if she does, then she needs to be exonerated. Okay? However, her bond was set at four hundred thousand dollars. Kyle's is at over is two million dollars. Her bond is a lot less. And guess what? A an organization out of Illinois pulled some money together and bailed her out. These were social justice warrior types, and they got the money together to get her sprung so that now she can prepare her defense. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm glad that somebody did manage to raise the money for her release. According to his argument, she's still in jail. She has to be, because she's black. How could she be released? His argument is, if she was black, she would never be given bond. And that's how they think. They don't look at the facts. They just simply spout this crap out of off the top of their heads. He's misinformed, and he doesn't want to be informed. I never heard of such, such a thing. See what I'm saying? And in the so-called black community, even if a person could raise $2 million, they would not be able to get out of jail because they'd be held without bond. False. False. Crystal Kaiser was given a, a $400,000 bond, and somebody came and paid it, and she's out on bond preparing for her defense. 
This is an injustice system. This system is corrupt. And because of the corruption of this system, it is obvious that in the future, in the long run, it will be dissolved. It will crumble because it is built on the foundation of corruption. And corruption cannot stand the test of time. Uh, corruption can stand the test of time. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Corruption can stand the test of time. It's been with us since eternity. Neanderthal man probably had corruption going on, and it's still with us. That's what they call a vacuous statement. You know, it doesn't mean anything. He just spouts this stuff out. But if you actually examine it, you think, wait, corruption cannot stand the test of time? Well, that's clearly wrong. And we have a perfect example with Killer Cow, this insensitive judge, you know, he's only thinking about the white nationalist perspective. He's not talk, thinking about these, these uh, men who were murdered and their families and their children and their significant others. And this is the insanity of so-called white nationalism here in the United States. It is one of the greatest enemies to Americans. Notice something. He started off by saying that I have no racism. I respect white people as much, but everything is the race card to this guy. Everything. Anytime he doesn't get what he wants, the race card gets pulled out. To him, race is to blame for all of his problems. But it is one of the greatest assets to the American clan. Let me say that again. White nationalism is a, one of the greatest enemies to Americans, but a great asset to the American. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to think about, you know, things that you may engage in or put yourself in these positions, especially if you're a person of color. Because if you went out and did the same thing that Mr. Rittenhouse did, your black so-called so-called black but will be in jail held without bail you know no special diets like this one guy that got the organic diet see these types of things that is going on it's continuously slapping well okay so again crystal kaiser is black same age as kyle she allegedly committed her crime in kenosha and guess what it's the same prosecuting team same court system. She got $400,000 bail. And somebody paid it. But according to him, that's impossible. You know, good people or honest people or people that want to believe in the system, slapping them in the face and saying, you know what? These are uh, racist, uh, Ku Klux Klan, good old boys, grand old party, uh, proud boys. Well, he's got everybody in this white terrorist nationalist stuff going on here. He's even got the Republican Party involved. Essentially, anybody that poses him politically is part of that white supremacy thing. He's um, a malicious, all the so-called white hateful entities. This is what's going on in the injustice judiciary system of the United Snakes of America. Did he say United Snakes of America? That's a new one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking time to listen. I hope all people with a reasoning mind will see the reality of what's going on. Put your prejudice to the side. Yeah, put your prejudices to the side. Put your alliances with your culture and the so-called people to the side. Yeah, put your alliances to the culture that you have to the side. And look at precepts upon precepts and truths upon truth and make an analysis. Before I go, that's one of the things I... By the way, he says, and then look upon truth upon truth. One of the things about truth is it relies on information. And you haven't examined this case whatsoever. You don't know anything about this case. You think that Kyle is out on probation. You think that Kyle was raised in a white supremacist family. And you think that Wendy Rittenhouse is essentially an essay leader.
you're not really sure that this thing even took place in Wisconsin. You don't know anything about what happened. You haven't followed this like I have. And therefore, you can't heap truth upon truth because you don't know the facts. So, yeah, this is rough. This is pretty bad. Cannot wrap my mind and my heart around how some people in the United States look at certain uh, behaviors and activities and are so heartless about it when it comes to people that don't look like them. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about heartless. You're advocating sending a kid to 60 years in prison because you see him as a white kid who has opposing political views to you. That's the truth. That's why you want him in jail. And you talk about heartless? And you know what? The root of this problem go to the lies that the founding fathers and those individuals that helped build this country on the evil, nefarious operation of the suppression and oppression of people and truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring this message in love. I leave you this message in peace, peace and goodwill to all mankind. Peace and goodwill? Well, go stuff it. You're not interested in peace and goodwill. You're interested in political victory. You want this kid thrown in jail because it represents a political victory for you. That's what's driving you. At the end of the day, God over everything. Love over everything. Truth over everything. And if you can wrap your mind and your thought process around that, you will become a better person and you will be doing your part to make this society or your immediate cycle or surrounding a better place to interact. Okay, so let me give you some advice. If you want to improve things, if you want to adjust what you think, why not go to my videos? Watch what Kyle was up to that night. Inform yourself. You will see a kid walking up and down Kenosha looking for people to help. He said that night that he was out there to help BLM protesters who got injured. He is on video helping injured BLM protesters. He's calling out medic constantly. Yeah, he was a little bit naive in some of the things he did. He's 17 years old. And so he's walking up and down, and then he gets separated from the other two guys that were sort of helping protect him, and he got ambushed by Joseph Rosenbaum, a lunatic. And he got chased. And at some point, he got attacked, and he fired in self-defense and killed Joseph Rosenbaum, and then the mob descended on him fueled by Joshua Zeminski, and they chased after him, and they would have beat him senseless if they had gotten a hold of him. And they ended up attacking him violently, and he shot a couple of them. That's what happened. But you cannot be bothered to learn the truth. Go to my channel. I have, what, 60 videos that I have produced on the Kyle Rittenhouse saga, and they are all unmistakable. This kid's innocent. He didn't do anything wrong that night. Well, he was a little naive, and he probably made a few mistakes. But for the most part, there's no evidence that he's a white supremacist terrorist out shooting people. You got fed that by the media. And also, the people around you that have poisoned your mind to the extent where everything that runs counter to what you think is an example of white supremacy. You blame everything on white people. And then you have the nerve to get here and cut a video where you're claiming that you're not racist. 